Hello everyone, I'm Hannah Jasmine Santos and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for the experiment in today's video, this is all about deep flip flop and JK flip flop. So when we say deep flip flop, this is a modified set reset flip flop with addition of an inverter to prevent the SNR inputs from being at the same logic level. So notice that there is only one input needed that is called the deep flip flop and the deep flip flop is named after the single data input this output simply follows the logic signal of the input the input is high the output is also high this flip flop may operate like an ordinary buffer but its gate input allow it to function differently and when we talk about JK flip flop this is the most widely used of all the flip flop design and considered to be a universal flip flop JK autonomous letter chosen by its inverter Jack Kilby to distinguish the JK flip flop from the other design so let's start our experiment number 11 so here are the materials that we will use in this experiment. First is our 5 volts DC power supply, alligator clip, the breadboard, connecting wires and jumper wires, our SPDT switch, the 5mm red LED and green LED, our IC which is 74LS00 that is NAND gate so let's start our experiment number 11 so here is the circuit that we will set so let's start we will now put the IC in our breadboard and after that you can see in our figure that number 1 and number 2 is connected so let's choose this little one to connect the number 1 and number 2 and now we will put our speed switch in our breadboard then number one and number two is connected in this switch so let's use this jumper wire we connect it to the center and we will also connect the um, switch to the positive and to the negative so here we will connect this to the um, positive and for the negative we will use this let's try another one Okay, so next, the number 3 of our IC is connected to the number 12. So, this is the 1, 2, 3. And our 12 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Next is, um, the number 13 is connected to the number 8. So, our 13, this, so this is the 12, so our 13 is here. We will connect this to the number 8. So, this is our 7 and this is our 8. Next is, the number 11 is connected to the number 9. So, our number number 9 is here, 8, 9. And the number um, 11 is 8, 9, 10, 11, this one. Next is, the number 10 is connected um, in our switch that is connected in our E1 and to the number 1 and 2 of the IC. So we will put it here. This is the number 10, 8, 9, 10, and we will connect this to the connection of the number 1 and number 2 that is connected also to the um, switch. So next, um, we will connect the number 7 of our IC to the ground and the number 14 in the positive. So next is to the positive. So this is our number 14. Okay, next we will now put our um, LED. Let put this on our breadboard. So the negative side is the short one and the positive is the long pin. So we will put it here. The negative side of the LED is connected in the negative side of our um, breadboard. So our LED is connected. The, so this is the um, in one which is connected in our one and two of the IC. Next, the second LED. So this is the input, which is connected in the number 11 of the IC. So the positive to the number 11. So 8, 9, 10, 11. And the negative to the negative side of the breadboard. Let's try the green again. Okay. 
so that's it. The last one is our entry. So that is the red one. So our entry is connected in our um, number eight, number eight of the IC. So the positive again, and the number eight is this one, white, white one. So put again the lead to the negative, and push. So let's check our circuit. So again, the one and two of the IC is connected, and it is connected to the center of the um, switch. Then next, number three is connected to the uh, number 12, which is this gray, the gray one. And number 13 to the number 8. So that is this purple. Next is 9 to 11. The number 9 and 11 is connected. That is the red number wire. Next is the number 10 is connected to the in one, to the number one number of the IC. So number 10 is um, the black one here. And um, the in one, here is our in one that is connected to the number one number of the IC. And to the switch, our in two is connected to the number 11. And the yellow one and the entry is connected to the uh, number eight which is the white one and the uh, negative side of the leads is connected to the negative side of the breadboard the number seven of the IC is connected in our ground and the number 14 to the positive side of the breadboard so let's connect this in our power supply so let's put here jumper wire in the negative and to the positive so black for our negative and yellow for our positive so here you can see the sign so this is for the positive and the other one for the gray is for the uh, negative so the so here our switch is in um, logic zero so let's open our power supply you can see that when the switch is at logic zero only the in three is at logic one while the in one and in two is at logic zero and we will now turn on our switch and you can see now that when the switch is at logic one the in one and in two is now at logic one our in one and in two is turned on so you can see also in the simulation in logic our figure one that when our switch is turned off, the only one that is at logic 1 is the in 3. While when we will make the switch at logic 1, the in 1 and in 2 now is now at logic 1. So now for our circuit B, we will connect this. We will put 2 AND gate and 4 NAND gate. So you can see the NAND gate here in the gates. And we will make the number of inputs as 2. Next, we will have our um, input, which is here in the top. Then also, the clock. You can see it here in the wiring. It is this, the clock. Next is our um, in 4, in 5, in 6, and in 7. Here, which is LED. So now let's connect the wiring. So the clock was connected here. And this one is to the D3. Next is the D4. Connected to this AND gate. And the output of the AND gate. Next is this. And we will connect the this one to this. And in this connection, you will connect it. So we can see in the circuit that is number 11, and this is number 9, and this one to this part. Next is we will connect this here and this on the top. And after that, we will connect that in our in 7. And we will connect our in 4 in our J, which is this, our in 5, in the D3, and in 6, in the um, D4. So that's it. Um, next, switch on the D4. So I will label this as our D3, and this one is our D4. This is our um, black pulse. Then, on the question, switch on D4, K input. So this, what happens to the output? So we will click this, and we will make it at logic 1. So what happened on the output is, 
um, in 6. So this is our in 6, in 5, in 4, and in 7. So our in 6 is now turned on. Or add logic 1. Next, switch on D3. What happens to the output? So this is D3. So you can see that when we switch on the D3, our in 5 now is at logic 1. And what happens when we switch off D3? What happens to the output? The in 5 will turn off and become at logic 0. Switch off the D4 input and repeat step 7, 8. That is switch D3 on and off to observe the effect. So we will make this um, at logic 1 and we will turn off our D4. So what happens here? It's only D3 is at logic 1. And our in 5 is at logic 1. So that is our um, figure 2, which is JK flip flop. So I try to figure out the figure B, the circuit B in our breadboard. And when I'm finished, I turn on the D4. And you can see that the output in 6 turned on also the LED becomes at logic 1. But suddenly, after that, you can see that the voltage in our power supply drop. So I turned off the power supply immediately and I found out that the IC becomes hot. And in the other hand, the output of our D4 when we turn on the D4 the in 6 will be at logic 1 like what happened in our simulation so let's base on our simulation that is JK flip flop so that's all for today I hope you learned something new about the flip flop and JK flip flop don't forget to subscribe and like this video thank you